If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Hey everybody, it's Seth with the interview show. I'm here with Morgan Berman of My Milk Crate. Not Milk Crate, My Milk Crate. Um, it's if you look for it in the stores, make for it sure you type in My Milk Crate. Um, it is a, what is it, a crowdsourcing? You split, what is My Milk Crate? Let's, let's do it that way. Yeah, so My Milk Crate is an app that helps you find local sustainable businesses. Um, sorry, I have a bit of a cold right now. <clears throat> okay. So the app, Helps you find every farm-to-table restaurant near you. Helps you find every bike shop, thrift store. It's basically helping you tie your wallet to your, your values. So that the money that you spend goes into the local sustainable economy instead of shopping at businesses and supporting businesses that don't share your values. Okay. And then, um, so how, how old is the company? We'll be two years in September. Oh, it started wow. as my master's thesis in grad school. And um, we launched the first version a year ago in August. So our one-year anniversary for the app is coming up next month. A big party, and, big party. Yeah, you know, I actually realized last night we don't have anything planned. We've been so focused on running yeah. the company that, like, it literally occurred to me last night at, like, midnight. I was like, oh, my God, it's our one-year app birthday, and we have you, nothing planned. Exactly. exactly. So you got to come up with something fast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so explain a little bit more about my milk crate and like the whole thought process behind it and this more. Yeah, so um, I was in graduate school studying sustainable design, and for the first year I worked at this local magazine called Grid Philly, which is a publication that focuses on sustainability. And I really loved the content and the design and the mission of everything that I was reading about. Um, and I was trying to live my life kind of according to these values to make sure that I was eating locally, shopping locally, minimizing my carbon footprint by learning how to ride a bike in the city, composting with worms. Which, in the which if people don't know Philadelphia, that's challenging to not get hit while riding a bike yes, in Philadelphia. It's, well, yeah, it, I, I did get hit too, actually. I got run over, um, bounced. That's not, <laughs> that's not fun. Uh, no. So I was trying to figure out how to, you know, live my life according to these values that really matter to me and to support the local economy and to support businesses that were making good choices about how the, the purchasing choices they made, the way that they're sourcing and treating their employees and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, it was hard. I was spending a lot of time researching and studying and going to events and learning from people. And I thought, you know, it shouldn't be this hard to be a good person. Like it should be easy to make the right choices. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, it feels easier to support, to go to a, a mega store or a fast food uh, or to drive a car. Those feel like the easier choices. Absolutely. Even though long, yeah. Even though long term, the impact those things have on our health and even on our own wallets are quite negative. Um, so, I, I I kept thinking there's got to be an easier way. And uh, I had worked at Apple for about a year as a specialist in one of the stores. So I was helping people constantly using mobile technology, teaching them how to use iPads and iPhones and their computer and solving daily problems with technology. And eventually it just kind of clicked, you know, there should be some sort of tool like this. Now, of course, like every other entrepreneur out there, I thought I was the first person to have this idea and yeah. I wasn't. So I spent my master's thesis really researching what are the existing platforms out there that have tried to solve this problem and why have they failed? Why is it that so many people are still making what seems like the more convenient choice instead of the choice that will actually reflect their values and align with how they, they want to see the world around them functioning? So 
that really was kind of the initial like first year or two of just kind of incubating this idea in my mind. And then once I really came up with a plan of, okay, I'm going to build something that's kind of like a green Yelp, a directory tool so that instead of just finding whatever's convenient or has lots of stars, what also is something that you would actually feel good about your money going to support. So Absolutely. that was step. So, so, so social currency pretty much. Right. Yeah. yeah. What, what are the things? Uh, yeah. So that was kind of step one. And we, we launched that about a year ago. And what we've been moving closer and closer to is how can we get more ingrained in people's daily lives, be a stickier experience, which is this, you know, buzzword in, in the tech scene. Like, how can we be a friend to our users and help guide their decisions on a daily basis, not just once in a while? Mm -hmm. And so that's when we started playing with um, financial data and thinking about how can we integrate your that's spending always fun. Patterns. That's always fun. In, yeah. <laughs> Dangerous. Well, <laughs> yeah. And then also tying in with events so that we're this kind of live presence in your life. So those two things, your, your spending patterns mm -hmm. and, and live events are kind of the two things that we've been moving forward on in the last couple months. That's exciting. So how many users do you have now? Do you know that off the top of your head? Uh, I do know. It's not as many tech entrepreneurs will tell you. But that's not something you usually share at this early stage. You have, um, you have enough? Do, you have enough? We'll leave we have there. enough. We have a lot of great users, and we actually have um, some really big events coming up in the fall that oh, are going to okay. probably add a couple zeros onto the end because um, we are going to be the official app for several events and festivals, uh, including the Boston Local Food Festival with 50,000 attendees in September. Oh, wow. And people will be using our app to navigate the event, learn about the vendors, um, save vendors that they like to their favorites list. That's awesome. And okay and then hopefully keep using it after the event. So um, we've got a bunch of those like big events lined up, and this is the first time we're really doing that kind of thing. So this will be a great user acquisition push for us. Yo, so what, city are, what cities are you in? Obviously Philly. We're live in Philly. We also are in Denver and Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, you, we'll got to, live you got to throw Princeton in there, yeah. In, and then Boston. Well, it, it kind of happened in this quick little way. I mean, there were there are a couple dozen businesses. It's not like the hundreds that mm -hmm. we have. Uh, we actually have over 1,500 here in Philly. But um, I was giving a talk at a conference there, and I really wanted the attendees to be able to experience the app the way it's in, you know intended to be used with actual data in it. So we quickly turned around. Um, one of our teammates is actually from Princeton, so he was helpful in getting us some listings that he suggested that we then vetted. And, uh, yeah, so Princeton. Cool. That's awesome. Awesome. So where, where can people go to get your app? Let's start with the web. Uh, what's, the, what's the web address? Uh, well, our website is mymilkcrate.co. Okay. And you can then click on the um, iOS button or the Google Play button um, and download it. We also have a web version live, so you can use it in your browser. Um, but, obviously, we recommend downloading it. It's free. So it's uh, free for iPhone and Android. Um, and there's a web app too. So what is the what is the monetary play here? Like how are you making your money? Like obviously you're you're a young founder who you know is passionate about what she's doing, but you got bills to pay. Even you know, you know, even though it <laughs> right. would be self-sustaining, you know, you still have to get the stuff to be self-sustaining. Right. So we've brought on um, a couple great customers early on, um, Zipcar, uh, the Fair Food Farm Stand, Russet Restaurant, the Energy Co-op. Wow. And these. These companies are promoting themselves in a number of ways in the app. There's, there's two primary ways that we, that we charge, um, that we bring in revenue. One is a premium profile. So in the app, I don't know if this is going to mm -hmm. show up very well on the screen, yeah. but um, if you go into the app, we have a... Move it over more in front of your face. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay. So if you go into the app, this is my favorites list that I've got. So here's... Here's the Fair Food Farm Stand. So this is their premium account page. Oh, okay. Uh, so you've got their logo, this banner image, and then if you scroll down, they've got a narrative about business owner and well, their values cool, yeah. and how they run the company. So this is what a premium account looks like. Now, since they're kind of they're actually a nonprofit, they put a picture of a goat there since they don't actually have a business owner, which it is. is pretty cute. It's pretty cute, yeah. Um, but. Uh, a company like uh, Solar States, so this is a solar energy provider. They actually install solar panels mm. um, on people's homes. Hey, you have some Doyle. I'm looking at it right now. You have some Doylestown in here too. Mm-hmm.
Yeah. Which I'm very pleased to see, you know. So you see Phil, because oh, yeah. when people see Philly in their Philadelphia area, they don't, in, the, in their Philadelphia property, they, they tend to forget about Bucks County and stuff. So oh, yeah, no. We're, we're growing pleased. into Bucks County, Montgomery County, Chester County. Um, we actually have someone who's um, helping collect data out in the western suburbs as well. That's so, awesome. yeah, we've got, we're growing everywhere. So data collection is all manual? No. Oh, that's, that's, um, that's, that's insane. No, that that would be insane, and that's something that a lot of other um, companies that have tried to solve this problem have done, and it's really held them up. So what we do is we partner with um, nonprofit organizations. So again, if you look back into mm-hmm. the app, and you go onto um, a business's page, so we'll go to break. Well, that's not a good. Idea. We'll go to okay. So Urban Engineers. Mm-hmm. This is a, a multidisciplinary design construction management company that focuses on environmental design. So this company has this badge right here yeah. this is and it says SBN so if you click on the SBN badge you then learn that they're a, biz, a member of the sustainable business network oh. so we've we've partnered with SBN and Fair Food and B Corp and about a dozen other organizations and we bring their data into one place I see so through the API I got that makes sense yeah. yeah very cool so that's how we grow our data we partner with organizations that have somewhere between a couple dozen and a couple hundred listings and once we hit somewhere around 500 or so listings we're then live in that city very cool i like that well morgan this has been great yeah a lot of people are going to watch this are to know how long it took us to get together and do this interview but <laughs> but you know we finally did it awesome and um so where can they find you online if they want to follow you and your escapades living sustainably uh me personally my my personal website is morganberman.co um, and they can, my Twitter handle is at Morgan Berman. Um, but I'd rather you follow my milk crate app. Uh, that's the Twitter handle. Um, we've got a lot of great postings. Caitlin on my team is always on there posting great oh, content, um, and sharing with people and promoting the businesses that are in our app. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thanks for being on the show. Great. Thank All you. Right.